All right, how's it going, folks? This is Green Omega for Green All Life. <clears throat> this is another, uh, I guess, general topic video. Um, I mentioned, geez, it's almost a year ago, um, but it was directed towards security guards in New York City and, uh, you know, the directions that they should go when they decide to move forward with their career. Um, I took the time out to just kind of look at this uh, fire and life safety director's course and uh, the path that you need to, to go across to try to get there. Um, I mentioned that I would kind of go over it. So I figured, what better time than now, all right? So first and foremost, before you can even uh, begin to think of becoming a fire and life safety director, there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of, okay? so. You need to take general topics of emergency fire, fire emergency course, which is a 20 hour course. Um, it basically is to get you familiar with fire and life safety systems from gravity tanks to fire pumps, to sprinkler heads, to fire department connections, to the number of sprinkler heads and wrenches that need to be at the fire command station, to the operation of the fire command station, to, you know, there's there's a lot of information that you need to know, and uh, you'll get most of that in that 20-hour um, course. Um, so this is the first step: general topics and fire emergency course. So um, you would have to go to an approved school. There's a ton of them. Um, I, I really don't know which one you should take it from at this point, but. Um, that's the first step. So you would have to take that. That's gonna run you maybe two fifty, I would say, give or take, two fifty for that first portion. You get the um, <clears throat> you get a book, and they'll go over the. It's about maybe a three day, four day, depending on how you, you break it down. Um, but it's gonna be a twenty hour course, and they'll give you everything you need, including uh, practice for the test. They'll give you the the whole gamut. So you just gotta make sure that. Um, you take this first then you can go down to the fire department which is in uh, Brooklyn nine Metro Tech and you take the uh, hundred question exam for that all right but you don't actually have to go right after you can do your non fire emergency EAP course which is a seven hour course now this seven hour course is uh, basically covering everything that is a non fire so if you had a bomb scare a bomb threat, uh, if you had an actual explosion, if you had a gas leak, if you had, uh, you know, hurricanes or any different kind of, you know, weather that would generate any kind of uh, an issue where you may have to evacuate your building, you would need to know what to do and, you know, because it's not always evacuate. Sometimes it's relocation. Sometimes it's partial evacuation. So you would need to know which is which. And uh, taking that course would uh, assist you in learning what to do in those circumstances. Um, so now we move on to the last portion, which is the non-fire emergency active shooter, uh, active shooter and emergency, medical emergency preparedness um, course, which is a four hour course. And uh, this four hour course, Roughly will give you what they call the ABCs of this type of work. So you'll 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 learn ABC, which is uh, an acronym for avoid avoid the um, the situation if possible, uh, barricade if you cannot avoid it, and um, C is confront. So you would confront the shooter if there is no other option. To protect your life and the life of others so that's <clears throat> more or less what you would have to to know um so those are the three main components that you need prior to even getting into the fire department to becoming a fire and life safety director this is a multiple stage thing it's not an easy thing but that's why uh, at the end of the day you get paid the big bucks to do this thing all right so there's a lot of uh jargon if you will that you need to learn need to know all the the uh, the jargon 
like unwarranted alarm? What is an un unwarranted alarm? What is an unnecessary alarm? What is a trouble signal? You know, all these terms, you'll find them on the internet as well as during your class, your book, they'll go over all these things, a different type of alarm, alarm activating devices. Manual pull stations, smoke detectors, duct detectors, heat detectors. There's a whole slew of them and you will learn all of these things. So in order for you to become a fire safety director, so I guess technically even before you can even take these courses, before you even take these courses, you should know that you need to be at least 18 years of age. Okay, obviously you will be. If you're a security guard, you have to be 18. So assuming you've got that requirement that you're 18 years old, right? And you have a reasonable understanding of the English language and be able to answer satisfactorily such questions as may be asked of such applicant upon his or her examination. So again, you know, must have a certain level of mastery of the English language in order for you to be able to uh, perform that task. Uh, present such evidence of his or her character habits and past employment as may be satisfactory to the commissioner. Okay, so that basically is saying you need a letter. Okay? Have at least three years full-time work experience in one or more of the following fields in any combination thereof. Or 18 months full-time work experience in one or more following fields. Okay, in any combination thereof. That includes at least six months of continuous employment at one work location. So if you fall under any of these categories, you qualify. That was one of the things that, that was a little rough when I first began my journey uh, into this field. It was not so easy to get in. Uh, it was very murky, very unclear. So now they kind of clarified it uh, and they'll let you know a lot more clearly what it is you need to do and how to get to it. Um, back when I started, the, the verification process and everything was just not exactly what it is today. So now they're a lot more thorough. So it's gonna take um, more proof, I guess you would say. All right, so these are the ones either firefighting or public safety emergency response employment, uh, any fire related, fire safety related employment, including code enforcement, fire safety inspection, fire prevention, or emergency preparedness, which is where security will fall under, under emergency preparedness, okay? So when you are trying to get this license, you will have to provide the fire department with a letter that says that I've been working as a, you would say a fire guard, at whatever whatever the location is for X amount of years, I was a member of the fire brigade, you know, or floor warden, and then, uh, I was responsible for communicating with the fire safety director, uh, evacuating, um, doing fire drills, and, you know, all the other things you need to know. But we'll get to that later. All right. So uh, uh, the design, installation, operation, or maintenance of building fire protection, electrical, plumbing. Heating, ventilation, or air conditioning systems or other building system regulated by the construction codes or equivalent experience acceptable to the department. All right? It says examples are listed on the following pages. Okay, so that would be successfully complete the FLSD director training course. FLS director training course approved by the fire department of New York City. Past FDNY required written and on-site examinations to be physically able to perform the duties of the position. Applicants are prohibited from being employed by any fire department approved FLSD school for at least four years after taking the FLSD written and on-site exams. Okay? So you have to wait four years okay, to work as a teacher in this field. All right? So your qualifications, here it is, three years full-time work, all right? And again, you know, they explain, now they explain everything here in very, very great detail. So if you wanted to read up on this information, I can't go over everything because this video is already nine and a half minutes and I haven't even gotten anywhere near where I need to go with this video. I was planning on being able to get all this information that I need for you guys, but I don't know that I'll be able to reach it at this point because this video is, put, you know, we're pushing 10 minutes. But uh, <clears throat> if you wanted to find out the information that I'm looking at right now, this is this is not my own personal information. This is stuff you can find on the internet very easily if you go to www.nyc.gov 
and then you look for the uh, fire and life safety director uh, notice of, of examination or curriculum PDF okay so that, that would that would uh, give you that would give you the information that you need okay now you may you, you, you may have a hard time but you don't just don't give up you've got to continue to improve where you are and the way you're going to do that is by not giving up persevering and becoming a fire and life safety director okay it's going to be tough it's going to be some times where you're going to want to give up but trust me it's going to be worth it at the end okay especially if you're a security guard believe me you need to get your behind into these schools and uh and basically get this exam so i'm going to quickly uh, see if I can show you this photo. All right. So, as you can see here, right, this is the flow chart that they have. This, this is all the steps you need to take. And I know it's a little confusing, but um, essentially, this is what you need. Okay. I show you that because I'm letting you know it's not a, it's not a. a walk in the park it's going to be a little tough for some people some people may not be able to do it at all but if you're capable of doing it I, I would definitely highly recommend you go on ahead and take care of this now again on this this uh, notice of examination this curriculum PDF there's a lot of information here that you need to, to know so it's a, it's a big um, I think we're, we're talking about something like a hundred pages 471 pages so there's a ton of info here that you will find to be very helpful to you when you're taking your exams, okay? So, <clears throat> so that sets the stage, okay? You have all your documentation proving that you have the experience that you claim you have, okay? You're gonna download this document from the fire department website that is going to be your employment verification. You're gonna write down all the information that you need to write down, such as if you are part of a fire brigade and you know how to use a fire extinguisher, you know where your exits are, you know how to do a fire drill, or if you've been a part of a fire drill, you've evacuated anyone. So any of these things that I've just spoken about, if you've done any of those things, okay? Um, or if you use the water phone, use the walkie-talkie, you've uh, done anything, you know, you followed the orders of the fire safety director at the time, that is all going to go into that experience uh, section of that application. You're going to need to fill that out and bring it in because they're going to need to go through that and verify and prove. If that is enough proof for them, then they will accept your paperwork but if it's not you're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and figure out how you're gonna meet, meet the uh, three-year requirement okay so that's just the one thing i just wanted to get out the way because a lot of people may look at me like hey you lied to me no you need to have three years of experience in fire related duties okay so if you were ever a part of the fire brigade some people have been a part of the fire brigade but don't know it okay so if ever there's an emergency and they call you to go and assist, you are part of the fire brigade. This is why I say all security guards, you're part of the fire brigade. All right? Now, you have all your paperwork. You go to the school. You do your three courses, right? Take it down to the fire department. You're going to sit down. You're going to take your multiple choice tests you have two you need to take one is going to be the uh, fire related and the other is going to be non-fire related those are going to be the two so you take those you pass those two exams you're going to have uh, about about a, i'd say about a month or so and you'll receive a uh, certificate in the mail saying that you have successfully completed blah 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 and you are now a acting fire and life safety director at which point you can go down and get a job and that job will then sponsor you to then become on-sited at that property okay so once you become on-sited on that property you'll get the plastic card that states that you are now a fire and life safety director all right so that's how you get to that point 
I'm going to go over in great detail what needs to be done to pass the fire related portion of your on-site exam, which is very difficult. Believe me, a lot of people have failed this part. Okay, the non-fire emergency related is not that difficult because you're always going to be utilizing two of the four, except for uh, during a gas leak or, or an explosion, which is, those are the only two times that I'm aware of that you do total building evacuation. Um, bomb threat, explosion, I'm sorry, uh, not, not bomb threat, explosion, legit explosion and a gas leak. Those are the only ones, okay? So that's just a heads up. It, it, it is gonna be a bit uh, trying for you, but I think you can do it. If, if, if you're dedicated, you can make it, you understand? So don't, don't become discouraged, you'll be fine. You just gotta make sure you put the time, the effort into it. The same way you would anything else you want in life. If you want something that's worthwhile, you're gonna have to put that work in, all right? So um, that's where we at with that, all right? So when you when it's all said and done, if you work, say, in a hotel or in a building that doesn't have a fire, uh, sorry, an emergency action plan that has been approved, if it's not, you will not have to take that non-fire uh, emergency portion of the onsite you would just have to take the fire related one which is the by far much more difficult version of that exam because you will get the entire thing um, moving forward but if your building doesn't have that plan then you'll get them separate you'll get the first portion which will be the fire related one and then once they get their plan approved then you'll do that additional um, non-fire related emergency one okay so you just have to make sure that you you understand that we're all clear my focus on my next video regarding this topic is going to be that fire related duties um, I'm sorry the fire related emergency on-site examination I'm gonna go over it in as much detail as possible so stay tuned this is probably gonna be um, it's gonna take some work but I'm gonna get it to you probably within the next couple days if not even sooner than that okay definitely gonna get this video out um, but all right, y'all. This is Greed Omega for Greed on Life. Stay up.